In today's video, I'll go over a short demonstration on how to export your files from Illustrator to Photoshop. I'm first going to go to File, Export, Export As. The next window that pops up should ask me what type of format I'll be saving this in. I'm going to save this as a TIFF file, but I'm also going to save or export the artboard, which my artwork is sitting on top of. So I'll select Use Artboard. The next window that pops up asks me what type of color model I'll be using. I'm going to say RGB, 300 resolution, and where it says anti-aliasing, you want that to say none. Typically, it will default to super sampling, which is art optimized. I'm going to first save this as none, and then I'll save another one as art optimized to do a comparison in Photoshop. I'm going to save this one as example two. This time around, I'll say Art Optimized. This is the wrong way to export your file. In Photoshop, I'm going to open up both of my files. I'm going to zoom into the first file where I selected Anti-Aliasing to say None. As you can see, the pixels are really clean, meaning I can throw in an additional texture or sub-pattern or even make a selection and move it without having to clean up additional pixels. If I zoom into the second image where anti-aliasing was set to art optimized, we can see when I zoom in that the pixels have a blurred edge around the outside. This will be more problematic when I make selections and move motifs throughout the composition. You can see in this case it's leaving behind blue pixels that are adjacent to the next color. It's really important to make sure when you export artwork from Illustrator to Photoshop that anti-aliasing is set to none. In this artwork I can see a couple different repeats. I'm going to chop this down to a single repeat which is going to make it easier for me to edit the artwork. I'm going to use Magic Wand with Contiguous Check. I'm going to select on a motif that I can see repeating throughout the layout of my design. I'm going to drag a guide from the rulers that will snap to the same location. I'm going to select the same motif diagonally, where I'll also drag down guides to define the repeat unit. The repeat unit of this artwork as a straight repeat is within the boundaries of the guides, even though the motif is laid out as if it were half dropped. I'm going to crop this down by going to Image, Crop. I can define this pattern as a repeat. And then if I make a larger file, or better yet, just as a quick overview, if I go to New Fill Layer, Pattern, I'll select the most recent pattern, and I'm going to view that at maybe 30%. So now you can see what the repeat looks like, 30% scale in repetition. I normally don't use these pattern fills as my final file. I usually only use the pattern fills as a means to visualize the artwork. 